Doctor, I want to get your opinion on trade wars because on, under outgoing Director General Azevedo, we have seen this huge tit-for-tat regime, the United States versus China, the United States versus Europe. And if President Donald Trump is re-elected to the White House, the self-declared tariff man could continue in the same vein. Where would that leave the WTO? I, I think, Karen, that you have to make sure you distinguish between political wrangles uh, that that are out there and don't involve the WTO and WTO specific issues. I, I think it's uh, confounding the two uh, may lead to a situation in which the WTO is involved in issues it should not be. But if you look at WTO specific issues, there are also areas where uh, both the US and China, the US and EU have uh, common areas of agreements. I'll give you one example now. There are ongoing negotiations on fishery subsidies that are multilateral negotiations. And you've got the US, China, EU, all other members around the table in these important negotiations. So it's not all the time that uh, there are disagreements. And I think we should look for areas where all members of the WTO can agree and can move the organization forward in a more unified manner. Doctor, you've had a very successful career. Many see the WTO role as a poison chalice with so much infighting of the member countries. Why do you want the role? Why do you want to put your name forward for this position? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Uh, trade matters in the 21st century. And we've seen trade lift up hundreds of millions from poverty. Uh, there's still so much, so many countries so many members of the WTO that can benefit, including even the large country members. So we need to make it work because we still need trade and we still need the WTO. We need trade to be inclusive. There are people who have been left behind in, in, in the era of globalization, but by expanding to look at issues of micro, medium and small enterprises, issues of women in trade, we can make trade inclusive and the WTO can make the rules that underpin that. So I think this is an instrument for development, an instrument for sustainability for the world. And that's why I'm keen on it. Uh, Doctor, when you started out talking to us, you mentioned some of the, the small versus large nations. And I wonder whether that challenge is growing because COVID-19 has disrupted China's role as a supplier to the world. And some other countries have emerged as major wholesalers. And I'll cite Vietnam as one of those countries. How important will the role as WTO Director General be to protect some of the smaller nations against trade fights from larger members who may be concerned about their growing dominance and the amount of of business they're winning on the back of this crisis? Well, absolutely. This is why the WTO is very important and needs to be fit for purpose, because indeed smaller countries, uh, uh, poorer countries depend on this system uh, for a fair multilateral trading system. So I think in, in, in the course of things, the WTO rules, uh, do they do protect those countries that don't have the enormous economic power. Uh, that some others do. So I, I think that's why it's important. It assures that trade takes place within an environment that is fair, um, that is transparent, uh, and, that, and that works for all members.